Sal, extreme, <laughs> going crazy. Yeah. Who, us? Yeah, right. not The New York media? <laughs> uh, how valid is Chris Bassett's point that it was only three games? Uh, I love Chris Bassett. Big start. He's wrong on that one. Number one, I don't think it was the media. I mean, I don't know what he's watching or reading. It's the fans, and there's reason for it. This is not panic out of nowhere. By the way, I'm mayor of Panic City. I was not panicking <laughs> last night. Remain calm. The Mets will be fine. They've been a good team all year. But it's about the fans going nuts because the Braves are catching the Mets in the standings. That's where it was frustrating. And the fact that the Mets were getting pasted by three, you know, three games by two awful baseball teams. So it was a culmination of a couple of things. Ultimately, he's right, overreacting to three games when a team has proven that they've been good all year long. I get it, but it was not the New York media. It was the fans, and it was a culmination of things. Look, Chris Bassett's very confident in his team. He should be very confident in his team. They've answered the bell every which way. But as far as fans reacting to what the Atlanta Braves are doing, well within their rights, the Atlanta Braves, Sal, you know this better than anybody, yeah. they don't <laughs> lose. <laughs> I mean, they win night after night after night. And I saw the graphic in the SNY broadcast. You see the Mets' performance over the last 30 games. They're still well over 500. It's the fact that the Braves have been out of control. So, Chris Bassett, it's not the idea that the Mets lose three games in a row. It's three games in a row to terrible teams. And the fact that Atlanta just keeps gaining on you. Yeah, there is a difference between winning this division and falling short and having to put all your chips in the middle of the table in a three-game series. You know, you get tagged in a tweet with Salicata and the Braves. Next thing you know, you got 50 Forget mentions. about it. You're like, hey, it's over. I'm on Twitter. <laughs> it's and, over. And most of them you can't read on the air, That's by right. the way. Yeah. Yeah. Exist, Hi, uh, Atlanta. Well, yeah. you know, you talk about the fans <laughs> panicking. One of the reasons why they were reaching for the panic button was the listless offense. That was not the case on Wednesdays. There were some bats that have been awfully quiet lately that made a lot of noise. J.J., which was the most encouraging to you? And what o Escobar. Long overdue. And, I mean, all of the above for the guys at the bottom of the order. Let's be honest. The bottom of the order has not hit. It's been the Jeff McNeil show. I know we can talk about Lindor and what he was able to do. But Escobar, Sal, is a guy that the Mets were counting on at the beginning of the year. Has hit terribly from the left side. Seeing him go Yahtzee. Seeing Naquin contribute. They need these guys. I mean, they've got nothing out of that DH spot. And that, to me, is the big takeaway of this doubleheader sweep. Look, the Pirates stink. You expect to beat them. I expected DeGrom and Bassett to do the job. The Mets scoring some runs long overdue. Production at the bottom of the order. Even McCann chiming in with a couple of hits as of late. So he's been better. Nick, when you mentioned he had the big blow in game one, kind of relaxing everybody inside that clubhouse. Escobar is the key, though. And here's why. Guillaume is going to come back. He's going to play as he should. Now you can move Escobar to DH, potentially, and get Vogel back and rough out of there. And you're getting a bat that's – I know he's had a rough start to his Mets career here in New York with Escobar, but he's a proven player. He's a professional and a guy who may be healthy now and getting right at the perfect time for the Mets. So Escobar is a big key because he could be a difference maker as a DH, if not in that everyday lineup. And let's not lose sight of Lindor because Lindor and Alonzo for the last three weeks have done very, very little. And if the Mets are going to be a big-time playoff team, yes, we spend a lot of time talking about the prolific pitching and Scherzer and DeGrom and Bassett. Those two big stars, they got to perform. Yeah, those are their big power guys, the big run producers as well.